All right, guys, so welcome back to the channel and thank you for tuning in to Johnny's Motorbike Bicycles. As you know, we are doing something with motorized bikes, but we're doing something a little bit different with something a little different of a motorized bike. And uh, this is where we're at. Let me show you. So you know my longtime customer. Bear has girlfriend, fiance, wife. I think this is part to do with her technically. So this is just a mini, it says it right here, mini dirt bike, mini 40. So it's probably a 40cc four stroke motor. I'm pretty sure it's a four stroke. And uh, man, this thing flimsy. It doesn't run, hasn't run in a long time from what I'm guessing. Yeah, long time. So we are going to see what we could do with it. I'm not planning on doing anything spectacular, but it does need a rear tire. So we'll see what we could do about that. Everything's rusty. Everything's just beat to crap. So we're going to see if we can make it less beat to crap and get it running again. Main thing is going to be getting it running. We're going to break into this thing. We're going to get this thing running and we're going to see how we do it. But it's all got to start with taking it apart. So let's start doing that. Right, guys i'm trying to get you in here so you can see it i'm noticing when i do this like I, I was pulling the pull start and you could feel air out the exhaust right you could feel it but i just something doesn't feel right so i popped off the valves i feel like we're not getting compression somewhere and look what i found what's crazy to me is these have adjustable valves and for it to have adjustable valves in just some stupid little machine like this is really funny but that valve is completely stuck down. The only thing I could do here at this point, it looks like, is maybe break the whole motor down because I need to see what's going on in there. All right, let me uh, see what's going on. I, I knew it didn't feel like it was making compression because we definitely have spark. I already checked that. We have spark 100%. If something has fuel and something has spark, the only way it will not work is if it doesn't have a place to ignite it. If we got spark and I know there was fuel in here, so be it really crappy fuel, Everyone says you need spark and fuel to make a motor run. Yes, but that's not completely true, nor is it completely inaccurate. You need spark, you need fuel, but you also need a place for that fuel and that spark to be locked up so it can explode. Otherwise, it's just a fire. I haven't worked on a four stroke like this size and, you know, not counting car motors or I don't know, probably since I was a little kid. So let's see if I can remember any of this. All right, guys. So, uh, well, we've gone quite a bit farther than we originally were planning. Oh yeah, yeah, isn't that always the way? So I took the motor off completely, mainly because I had to. Uh, this also had oil in it, but not a lot of oil in it. So I'm thinking it could have just been a little bit of oil starvation. I did drain the oil out of it, what was left in it. Uh, there wasn't much left in it. So I took all that out and uh, I don't know, I guess we're gonna see, we're gonna break this open. She is really stuck in there. What is moving around? Oh, that's this thing. Let me take this thing off too, because I don't know what's going on here. That's a gear. Oof, I hope that's not timing. So I did not look at anything for timing. Yeah, we'll figure it out though, right? Right. Oh yeah, this looks important. Look at that. That looks super important. That is a cam on here. See the way it's working? So as it spins, boom, boom. Exhaust intake, exhaust intake, exhaust intake as it spins around. So it definitely is gonna have to be timed, but whatever, one cylinder, I'm pretty sure I can figure out the timing on that. What does this little O-ring go to? I don't know, you are just laying in there. You are metal, you probably don't go there. Although I could see how it would go there, but that's way too small. I don't know where that thing goes. I think that goes where I just said it does, but it all fell apart when I took it apart. So I have no idea if I'm being completely honest with you. I didn't take the carburetor off the bike, I just took it off the motor. So it's sitting right here. Uh, I think it's probably going to need to be gone through, but it's a diaphragm carb, so it shouldn't be that big of a deal. So it shouldn't be that big of a deal. So it shouldn't be that big of a deal. So it shouldn't be that big of a deal. So it shouldn't be that big of a deal. So it shouldn't be that big of a deal. Everything does need to be gone through, though. You know, the brakes, everything. Basically, the whole thing just I needs gotta to build be a bike for somebody. Well, I don't gotta, I want to. Um, they're paying me, so I guess I got to now. Anyway, so. I got a brand new motor for him. I'm going to throw it on the desk. 
parts are done, I'm going to change them out. I am at the moment cleaning up the parts in my washer, my parts washer, the uh, ultrasonic, for a four stroke at the moment. So I got myself a brand new motor. You all know what's in here. Super simple, ADCC. Let me get this open and I'll show you exactly what we got. All right, so we got the basic numbers. Let me tell you what the starting numbers are. Intake is a 124, the transfers is a 104, and the exhaust is a 142. Those are alterations. It's a 38 millimeter stroke. It's an AF80 connecting rod with 38 millimeter stroke. The goals, so the numbers we're going for with the intake is 140 for the intake, the transfers is a 110, and the exhaust is a 168. So we're trying to get a 168 for the exhaust, and the intake, try to get it to a 140. And the transfers, we're gonna try to get to 110. So I'm not going very aggressive. I would like it to rev up another, I don't know, 1500, something like that, if I could, and get a little more speed out of the top end. You will have a much longer running motor if you make your power in the top end of the RPM range than you will at the bottom of the RPM range. The RPM range is important. If you make all your power at the bottom end, you will blow through a crank pretty quick, a few thousand miles. If you make it in the top, where the motor's just spinning fast, uh, that's why my mine lasts so long, because I, I really manage the power. Just like I do with Jokester, I have done But that's a story for another video. Back to what we were talking about. Rewind. So what we were at, this is Lanessa's motor for her nephew, I think we'll say. I think it's a nephew, whatever. A young fellow that she knows she's given as a gift, I think for her graduating or something like that. They didn't get into the particulars, just wanted to know what you wanted done. So this is what we got done. And then I'll actually show you on the motor itself. So our stock numbers are 124 intake, 104 transfers, 142 exhaust, and 19 degrees blowdown. Okay, so this is what we got. So I had goals, one, um, you know, and then I, I shot for those goals. I, I'm getting pretty okay at this, so I actually got right on the goals. So anyway, the intake, it now opens at 70, closes at 70, 140 degrees of duration. The transfers now, ho, 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 it's one of the injection molds with the nice, uh, transfers. I really didn't want to do anything to it, but I really needed to get the transfers up a smidgen and I didn't want to ramp the piston. So I had to go in and ruin the transfers on this, but they now open at 124, closed at 236. We now have 112 degrees of duration. So that was nice. I was able to raise it just a wee bit. Nice eight degrees there. Exhaust, it now opens at 95, it closes at 265, and that's 170 degrees of duration, which is nice. The blowdown is now 29 degrees. <laughs> this is a 38 millimeter stroke, just so you know, it is an AF80. Uh, a lot of people, oh, that's a four, no, 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 no. They could be, uh, well, I don't have one here. I got one to show you. Okay, uh, what is this? This is, oh, this is actually an AF80 also. Okay, so an AF80 does not mean it is a 40 millimeter stroke, okay? This does not dedicate the size of the stroke. I mean, it, it helps and it can, but what really makes the difference, because this could be a 38 or a 40, is if the pin that holds the two pieces together, that holds the connecting rod, Okay, if that is lower in the crank, it will be a 38 millimeter. If it is higher in the crank, it will be a 40 millimeter. So that's how you determine stroke, or that's how they determine stroke. So an AF80 can be, uh, a Somalic has a really good uh, generic little list. It gives you the possibilities. And from there, you gotta do some measuring. Super simple, it's not hard to do. Don't overthink it. These things are not difficult to work on. Don't be scared to work on them. If you have any questions, you can always hit me up on Facebook Messenger. There's always a link in the description. And uh, there's lots of people in the group, Johnny's Motorized Bicycles Facebook group. And there's a group chat. You can hit me up on any of those things. Hit up many of the other people. There, Kevin is in the group, kept from Kevin's shop. Little Evil's in there. There's a lot of people in there. And then not even just the, the content creator people. There's 
other people that know a lot more than a lot of us. Even uh, Kurt Smolik is in there. There's people in there that really know the biz, that are in the racing side of the biz, that make big power, that can, you know, really help you out if you need help. So feel free to go down there. It's uh, free to join. All right. We are pretty okay, guys. So this is what we did. We got everything on. We're good to go. Carburetor's on. Spark plug's in. Exhaust is in. Exhaust also has M8 holes, bolts. I had to drill and tap for M8. Uh, reason being is the casting was horrible. It's like whoever drilled it leaned it this way and this way. It's like the person went in and leaned the drill hard like this. There was threads on top and bottom, but it was like ovaled out going this way. It was weird. Only fix was to tap and drill. I don't have heel coils for that size. Since I was doing the one side, I'm like, whatever, just do the other side. So it doesn't look stupid. It looks symmetrical. Took the acorn nuts off because those were stripping out immediately. And um, did the preload on the clutch. So we're good there. The spring is on too, the way I like to put it, hooked into the actual eyelet. Everything's good. Cut the white wire off before. Got all the mounting hardware on. The bike that we're going to be using is going to be, well, it's going to be one of two bikes. I haven't really fully decided. I'm leaning towards the silver one, even though I think it'd be better to get rid of the blue one. But you guys don't know what I'm talking about, so why don't we just go out there and see it? Come on, let's go. All right, guys, we're outside. Let's get this done. So we got everything we need. This is the bike we're going to use. Let's look at it here. So this is what we got for it. It is all GT terrain. It says it's basically a GT all terrain. Timberline. I think this bike was late 90s, early 2000s is when this bike came out. It says Chromoly. So I'm guessing it's a pretty sure, yeah, it's steel frame. It's a nice little bike. It's not too heavy and it should fit the motor nicely. First thing we're going to do, like always, before we make it a motorized bike, let's make sure it is a good right, bicycle. motor is on. I have to take the exhaust off though because I need to bend it in a sewer grate because I don't have anything that will hold it hard enough, strong enough for me to bend it. It is definitely hitting the pedals, not a big deal, we'll just bend her nice. I got the derailleur all hooked up now. I am working on the handlebars. I'm about to throw you guys up on the handlebars or the front forks just to take a ride with me, but we got everything done. I'm pretty sure I even remembered to put the exhaust on. See the eye on, carbs on. Fuel is in, brakes adjusted, chain is going to stretch, so I'll have to tighten that up in a little bit. Front tire was going flat. I think there's a small leak in the tube, so I'm going to have to put a new tube in there probably. Everything else seems to be good. This is going to be the first test ride on everything. Clutch, make sure that works good. Brakes are good and all that stuff, so let's get going.
Yeah, so this video, I wasn't going to include both projects in it, but they're for the same person, and a video coming up is going to be me delivering both of them on the same day, so I just wanted to get them all in the same video. I'm pretty much up to date with my videos, which is kind of stressful, because now I'm down to the minute on making stuff, building stuff, and uploading stuff. Uh, with the editing, like this video, for instance, took me about two weeks to edit off and on, a couple hours, a few hours a day, really, to get it edited on my phone and everything between the two different sets of video projects. All right, stop to get something to drink, a quick check. It's doing really good so far, let's see how it does. I'm gonna start it up again and see what we do. Uh, I was gonna go a little bit more deep with the blue bike, the all-terrain GT, but I decided to just include it and go a little mild with it and have a new idea for a different 80 project to do something a little bit more in depth with it. But since they're both going to Ness, I believe her full name is Lemess, but go to Ness and they work really well. Uh, you hear me on this blue bike though, you hear how I'm always like walk, 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 walk in the long throttle, off throttle, back, back and forth, back and forth a lot. It's because I'm just trying to really put as much stress on the powertrain and the drive line and the motor and everything as possible. I just want to stress it out. So if anything breaks, it breaks on that little ride that I give it. Now, yes, these are kind of short rides, but when you're moving almost 300 pounds with the bike included, definitely over 300 pounds, that much weight for one of these little motors, it really stresses everything a lot more. Like for instance, with Heather's bike, her bike, when she rides it, does not slip the clutch at all. She does not notice the clutch slipping even a little bit. When I ride it, it slips constantly. That's because I'm more than two of her on the bike. So my body weight, puts a lot more stress on the bike than a smaller person and I can find out the weak links in any of the parts way easy. So either way I hope you guys enjoyed this. I included a bunch of the riding just because uh, you know it's all part of the video. So as always I hope you guys like the video with a little thumbs up and I hope you guys hit the subscribe button and turn on all notifications. Feel free to go down into the description. There's links for the Facebook group and the Facebook group chat. I would love to see you guys all in there talking and hanging out. So let's get at it.
besides the seat being a pain in my butt because I'm fat and every time I hit a bump it makes it go like this. But other than that, not bad. Seems to run okay. Everything seems really nice on it to be honest with you. I richened it up one spot and took it for a good little cruise. Definitely up to operating temperature and we don't have any fuel bubbling. If you don't know what I mean when I say fuel bubbling, watching air bubbles come out of the carburetor and go up the fuel line, meaning the fuel is boiling because the motor is so hot and the heat's not dissipating in between. Ways to fix this are putting a heat diffuser in between the manifold and the cylinder, or a lot of times, and like in this case, you could just fix it by richening up the fuel in the carburetor so more fuel comes in, therefore cooling down the carburetor faster. So I don't think we're lean anymore. Also, it had better feel on takeoff. It didn't sound as boggy. On takeoff, it's always gonna be boggy. When you're way up in idle and you hit it and it goes, that's lean. But on takeoff, it sounded better. Mid throttle, it just sounded way better, it sounded healthier. Uh, you guys heard it on the tape there for a little while. I'm happy, everything's good. New tires are on. I'm happy with it. She is dialed. All right, guys, we got everything done. It is cleaned up. It is completely taken apart, this little four-stroke. It's got the cutest little piston and crank. Look how adorable this thing is. Three rings, oil ring, and then two compression rings. See, they also don't have centering pins like in a two-stroke because the port timing is done not with the ports, but with the timing uh, with the cams that run the valves. So the intake is slightly larger. I also bored it out a little bit, just a tiny bit. There was a little bit of flashing that kind of got in the way. So I just wanted to make it so I could lose those parts. I just wanted to make it so that it was, you know, a little bit more free flowing. So if you guys don't know how a four stroke works, let me break it down really fast. So it has a connecting rod, wrist pin, piston, crank, just like in a two stroke. All that stuff is basically the same. The difference is, is with the valves. Now this one wasn't working because the exhaust valve, this valve here actually was stuck. It was, it was stuck open. So it wasn't making any compression. So the reason this happened is there was low oil for one and two, the oil was never changed and then they rode this thing a lot and beat the snot out of it without taking proper care of it. You have to take care of your motors. If you have a four stroke and you ride it a lot, even if you don't ride it a lot, at least at least once a year if you ri don't ride it a lot, but if you ride it a lot, once every two months, you wanna change the oil once a month, you wanna at least check the oil. So if you see like even in a car, you'll see smoke when it's idling and running a little bit of blue smoke blue smoke means oil burning oil white smoke is water usually in a four stroke if you see it smoking it's because the valve seals now it could be because the rings are wore out scoring in the cylinder blah 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 usually the reason is the valve seals they wear out because they get overheated from not having proper oiling now this has a lot of little cool oiling passages i have been dragging my feet on this for a while but it is pretty much crunch time and I have to do it now. Um, I think it's going to need the valves relashed. I did not mark which one was which. They're identical. So all I gotta do is get the proper lash and I'll be good. I do not have schematics. I'm just gonna go by what I think it should be. I've done a little bit of work on four strokes. <laughs> if I'm being completely honest, it has been maybe a little more than 25 years since I've actually broken a four stroke down like this. So this is... Um, Kind of a learning curve now. Now, I did buy a whole bunch of new stuff. Things I was waiting for, I was waiting for the new clutch to come in. So the old clutch, it was completely shot. You could see the difference in the uh, pads. It just needed a new clutch. It's a centrifugal clutch. We got that done. Everything else is cleaned up. Another big problem that I'm having is all these. I did this like a month ago, and I don't remember where all these go. So we gotta figure that out. The other big problem is when I took this off the side, so this runs, can you see it there? As this spins, that does your valves, okay? On top of it is little push rods. They sit on top of this, like this. And as this goes around, it pushes it up, boom. As this goes up in the air, it pushes on this. When this tilts down, it pushes down on the valve for that split second, and it opens the valve up. 
and that's where all your timing and your power come from. In any four-stroke motor, the easiest way to get it, the easiest way to get power in a four-stroke is in the head. The reason I say in the head is you want to open it up to get more air. So we did open it a smidge. I don't think it's going to make power. Like, don't give me. It's not. I'm not saying we're making power. I'm just saying I think it will flow slightly better. So it maybe be a little crisper, if anything. But the big issue is figuring out where and how all this goes. This was a while ago, and this was a mistake waiting this long. So I cleaned it out just a little bit. Same with the exhaust. You can see down in there, the exhaust valve is in already, but see how it's shiny to the left of the magnet sticking down there? See how that shiny ring? I put the valve tip, the very tip, I put it in my drill and I used a 220 grit, I think. Just basically cleaned it all up so it was nice and smooth, no nothing catching on your nail, it's super nice. And then I basically took the paper and I just stuck it over top of this and I put it down into each one of the valves so I could get it like that and then on this side I rotated it with my drill so I could get the uh, the face nice and clean but we have got a lot of parts to put together that I do not remember where they go and quite a few bolts I do not remember where they go well that's not true I remember they go in all of this all right it is the next day I did not record anymore last night because it was just late and I didn't want to it was like 2 30 ish in the a.m. so it is now a bright and sunny new day and we have this guys i was able to figure out how to put all of it together with the proper bolts and which which bolts go where for the most part pretty positive everything is in the right spot in the right hole the valves seem to be valving everything seems okay-ish at least good enough to operate all in all guys we're good. I put this together with some assembly lube, so this is not going to be a dry start. Plus on the fact I'm going to be putting two-stroke fuel in it because I don't have any regular fuel. Plus, it's good to run a little two-stroke because it helps oil everything up as you're doing a dry start. Uh, thank you, Derek. Um, if you don't know, Vice Grip Garage. He's wonderful. All right. I'll see you guys outside. First things we're gonna do though is before we put the motor on and start doing that, keep it a little lighter and easier to work with, we're gonna fix the rear wheel. We got a new wheel we're gonna put on and a new shock. The shock does technically work back here. Got something that was close. The, uh, the main reason I wanted to replace this, the bushings on the stock one are completely shot, like just completely shot. So I figured the best option is to uh, just get a new one. So I got one that was close. This is a heavier spring, so adults could ride. That's why I got this. It was just wearing it out. The bushings are completely shot, so the ride quality was bad. Now these also are rubber, as opposed to the new one. And this wasn't expensive. I got this for a cheap deal. They're nylon bushings, so this is gonna last much, much longer. I don't think anyone's gonna complain about that. It just give it a little bit more travel. Mainly, it's gonna be able to hold up more weight that's why i went with this spring plus it's adjustable yeah look at that that's way higher i'm gonna lower the compression on that spring too nice 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 okay now yeah so you're shot but we got a new one nice one too it even came with some really nice uh, valve stems and stuff like that Look at that. Nice shiny red and silver cap. Okay, cool. I think the problem's in this. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So I need new hose. All I need, well, I'm not going to put it back. I'm not going to push it off out back on it. I don't need to put the shroud on yet either. I just need to see if it works. So I need a new hose and a new filter. I got that right upstairs and then I'm done. And then I cannot see if it's running down or not. I know it's got gas. I just put some gas in it. I don't see any fuel getting into the carburetor. And why that's not barely running. Like it's only barely coming out. I don't get that. Like I know it's got fuel. I just put fuel in it. 
All right, guys, so uh, I could bring you up to speed really quick on what's going on. Basically, I got the bike all together. Also, I sprayed it down with some uh, purple fleck. I just thought it'd be kind of cool with the red cover. I also spray painted the cover red instead of black, so it should look good when it's all together and finished up. If not, oh well, it looked bad before. It's only gonna look just as bad again, but I think it will just make it look a little fancier, shinier. But we're having trouble here, okay? So last night, it was getting dark, so I quit. So last night, I took the shutoff valve off. Why did I take it off? Well, basically it was not working. So I drained whatever fuel was in here. It stunk really bad. It was very old. This thing was sitting for three years in their garage and who knows how long before that because they said they've never rode this. So they bought it broken and never fixed it. So this is clogged up. It would not let any fuel through with it in the complete open position. So there's something in here jammed up. I didn't take and open it yet. I'm assuming it's varnish and whatnot like that, but because it was jammed up in there and they never drained the tank because there was fuel in here, that means whatever was in the carburetor is also varnished. So I took the fuel filter out because that was also, where is it? It's in here now. But this fuel filter, one, it was on backwards and two, it was clogged. So it wasn't letting any fuel through. Uh, so I just, I just nixed it last night because I was trying to get it running uh, late last night before I went inside. So I just put a fuel filter in line, put some new two-stroke fuel in it. This is a four-stroke, yes, but it's a first start, so I want to have everything lubed up. Plus, I don't have any regular fuel. It's all going in there, but I cannot get this thing to prime. It will not. The little ball down here will not prime. So I got to take the carb apart and see what's going on. But before I dig in any deeper, I really just want to see if this thing's going to run at all because I have not tried running this. You know, I've never had it running. I don't know if my timing for the, the gear in the back and all, if that's all correct. So I don't have any carb cleaner. I don't have any ether. So I went upstairs, got uh, just one of those universal disinfectant, you know, sprayers. And I put some old two-stroke fuel. I have I have like some old fuel I use for cleaning stuff. I want to be able to spray it in here and just see if this thing even starts up. So let's go. Oh, oh. <laughs> she started right up, but this choke constantly closes. That's a problem. I mean, started right up as soon as some fuel got in there. You could see that. So that's great, guys. So the problem is definitely in the carburetor. We do have to figure something out with this. This is a problem because this just, as soon as you turn the thing on, it wants to do what it does. So we got to figure something out, some way to make this not do that anymore. I'm not really sure what we could do. It's all plastic. Okay, well, nonetheless, that's awesome. So honestly, this is kind of a better thing that there's no fuel in here disintegrating at all in a way because it, Gives me a chance of maybe getting this out. Okay, if you gotta take something like this off, guys, just take your time. Wow. So this was in the diaphragm. Your float and everything is in here. This is crystallized fuel. Huh, I wonder if someone put sugar in this. That's what this looks like. Look at this stuff, this stuff is, ro it's like rock. That's why I think someone put sugar in it. Sweet as hell, yep, sugar. So whoever had this bike before them was probably pissing them off. They went over, they put sugar in the tank, started it up and ruined the whole bike. This thing never would have ran without taking the carburetor apart. The float, everything is completely gelled up. Never, ever, ever would have ran. I think we're gonna pause here and we're gonna go inside on my workbench because I don't wanna take a chance of losing a tiny part. Okay, so we are inside. Actually got boiling water. I set the pot for some boiling water and a tiny bit of salt the salt is corrosive and I want it to uh, want it to start eating away at whatever this is, which I think it is sugar. So boiling water seems to be doing the trick because now the, the passageway for the fuel seems to be open. The, uh, the needle valve is good. The tip is not ruined. It came right out. So I think we're good with the, uh, the hot water. I'm gonna drain this and put some more boiling water in again. Oh yeah. I can't even grab it, it's already melting. So you, I don't know if you could actually see that, but whatever that is, which I think it's sugar, it just going right through it. The hot water is just doing perfect, exactly what we would want it to do. All right guys, I am feeling much better about this. I was a little worried to be honest with you. Like the needle valve was welded into the aluminum. This tiny little thing, can you see it? I hope you can. This was welded. 
I don't know, it's not, it wasn't actually welded. It was stuck solid in a rock of that stuff inside the diaphragm, inside the girdle and manifold of the carb. And now looks perfect. It might be a rubber tip, I think, so I gotta be careful. Came out great, looks great. I am very, very happy with this, guys. It is time to put it back together, completely cleaned out and ready to go back together. So I'm very excited and I am, I'm about 98% positive that once this goes back on the bike, fuel will start flowing. Okay, let's give her a whirl. weird it, it's like it's not getting enough fuel but you got to cover up the uh oh well, you got to cover the choke up the port when i cover the port up it does good <sighs> it needs more fuel so how do we give it more fuel like it will idle but anything after idle it needs like choke on it that's why i'm putting my finger there to block the intake but it sounds like it revs up nice and it sounds good at idling nice Everything works on it except for the carburetor's not working right though. So there's something wrong with the float. Maybe I gotta adjust it or something. Everything was really gunged up really bad. And when I had to pull it all apart, I might've, uh, you know, bent it slightly, which would make it not right. So I might take the car back off. See this here and what it does is it pushes up on the flap over here to cause a choke. Okay, so nice, cool. Without this piece of metal I put here, it just moves freely and it constantly chokes out. Now this thing is not running without choke. So maybe that's why it's like that because they didn't know how to get it to run properly. I need to make a new one of these and it should run without the choke. I gotta fix this spring, make a new spring so this will work but not flap. Basically I'm just making a pressure point for it. That, but let me see if I can make it a little bit better. The main thing here that we gotta take away from all this that's the super bonus better best thing is I have the timing for the valves right. The valve lash seems to be good. Everything I did seems to be per. One day later. All right, guys, I'm pretty stoked about this. You guys uh, know what problems we're having. We're having trouble with the carburetor, and I'll show you what I did to fix that. Here, watch this. Well, there you go, guys. We are cleaning the carburetor manifold. I'm um, doing it one more time, make sure everything's out of it. I'm fogging up there because of the steam, sorry. But just want to make sure this is right there are completely clean. So let that cook for a while. Real quick, I just want to show you while I have this. This has a benign hole right here. This does nothing. Here you go, this is the gasket for the manifold we're cleaning. So when you put it on, it goes like this, okay? Now that manifold goes in between this and this, but this goes here. And you can see where the gasket is. Nothing goes in this hole here, okay? That hole does absolutely nothing. It's probably for a generic mold that they use with all their carburetors. I wasn't paying that close attention when I took it all apart and whatnot. So when I put it back together, this spring fits perfectly in here. And I was like, boy, that doesn't seem right, but I could have swore by memory that's why I put it there. I thought that's where the spring came out of. I'm like, this doesn't make any sense. Why would it go there? There's nothing going on there. Maybe they, the guy that had the uh, bike before switched out the car, been messing with it. You don't know when you get something second and third hand. And then I started thinking, I'm like, that spring can't go there. It's got to go somewhere else. I have to take it apart and check it out. And then I started looking around and there it is. There's a machine part. Look at that. See the machine part down there? It fits perfectly in there. Also, when I was looking closer at this, see the gasket, that little indent right up there? See that shape right there? That fits perfectly over where that spring is, like the spring perch basically. So you can see it down in there. See the spring? It fits perfect, but that's where this spring goes. It doesn't go in there. I'm an idiot. And it goes right here. This is up because the spring needs to be there to push up. When that pushes up, it pushes the fuel in. It allows for the bowl to hold more fuel. The way it was running was like this and it was leaning it out. That's why it was only running on choke. Way too much air, not enough fuel. So there you go. Let's take this manifold out. It's got some weird bubbles coming out of it. Okay, so it's definitely got to be good now. I wanted to make sure this thing is completely cooked. Any sugar that was in there is out of there. It, I'm glad I boiled this directly because it was definitely getting out other stuff. Before I just put it in hot boiling water, I didn't actually let it boil. And I was worried I wasn't getting these orifices cleaned all the way. So, and without the spring there, this is collapsed. 
and doesn't let enough fuel in. So let me clean this up 100%, put it back in. Let's go throw this on the bike because this is definitely going to work now. Mark my words, it's going to okay, work. Okay, so you just saw what I did to the carburetor. I missed a spring. I put it in the wrong spot. You know, is what it is. I own up to it. Not a big deal. Just a messed up spring. Honestly, it didn't make sense the first time I did it. I was questioning it the whole time, like, why is this like this? But when I took it apart and looked a little closer under less tired eyes, I was able to figure it out. So that's great. Uh, we also have a problem with the choke. The, the choke just keeps flexing. All right, guys, one of the biggest issues I had with this was this thing would just open and close at will. What would usually happen is it would just go like this, and that's choking the motor. The whatever in mechanism was in this is broken, wasn't here, I don't know. It just moves too freely. So what I did, I made a custom little flat metal spring, just bent it up so that it hits that little, that notch in the choke. It holds it in choke, doesn't wiggle. And then you flick it down and it holds it open. So it's working perfectly and I'm happy with it. Who knows, if it's running properly, we might not even need the choke. All right guys, so you see how I fixed that? Just a little homemade, basic spring really like a little a little friction spring that's everything with the carburetor and i think it's time to put it back on and see how it goes okay fuel is on meaning i took the vice grip off everything's good there it looks like seems to be working okay everything that needs to be on for this to run is on i'm pretty sure let's prime it a little there we go, we got some fuel. Choke, choke is on. One eternity later. It's vibrating, I can't put my big fire on it. Let's let it run. Let's put the air filter and stuff on and see how that goes. I need a longer screw, guys. All right, I'll be back. A little longer than a few minutes later. Well, that's a good sign. It's still running. That's a definite good sign. Oh, look at that. All right, I'm not going to bolt this in and I'm not going to do all the other stuff. I just want to have a place to sit. Nothing's going to get broke or damaged. Nope. All right. Okay, I should have enough fuel in here to do a little test ride. Oh, yeah. I was on this thing because in case something explodes or you fall, I want to get it all. Wow, thank you. No problem. <laughs> it's the perfect size for me. 
You even look big on it. Yeah, you look big on it. Here, get me look on it. camera guy. This is fun though, right? Yeah. Stupid, stupid fun. It is. And it's, it gets going. If you stay in it, it yeah. gets moving. I don't. I didn't do a speed test. I don't really, you know. But I mean, if you stay in it, it moves. It's gotta be doing 25 miles an hour, I bet. Well, the motor runs crystal. It's so much better than it was. I'm gonna finish putting this together, tie it up, and take it over to her house and get paid. Oh, I gotta get the grease. And I gotta get the, what you call it? The zip ties. I went up there for that stuff. Then only got the battery and didn't get the zip ties or the grease. Freaking knucklehead. That's another thing. We gotta check the oil. Make sure the oil is still Gucci. Okay. Too much grease? Perfect. Uh, what should we do next, guys? Zip ties? Yeah, I think that's a good idea, too. I can't lie, guys. I am so happy to be done with this bike. Not even for anything else, except for the fact that I can make the video. Okay, guys, we are looking really, really good. What's next? Just the body mount. I mean, the mounting the body with whatever available mounts I have left to bolt it to, which are not many. Okay, it is already attached. The body is already attached with more bolts than it was when it came here. I've already doubled the strength of the body, just so uh, we're all clear. That's how well this thing was put together when I got it. From my understanding, Lynesse said she got this from her family member or something, maybe sister. And she said she thinks her sister or sister-in-law is the one that put sugar in the tank. And I didn't really totally understand the text, but it sounds like she knew that that might have happened. She just didn't believe that that was actually the case. And then when I told her, it tasted like someone put sugar in the tank, which remember guys, I do not recommend you licking any contents in the carburetor. Leave that to professionals like me. So she was like, wow, I couldn't believe she did that actually. And I was like, you mean you knew about it? <laughs> Cause she definitely did not tell me that that might be a thing, which is okay. I was obviously able to figure it out, but having that information before would have been handy because then I wouldn't have had to play, play guess what's wrong with my mini dirt bike. We figured it out pretty much right away. I mean, I knew it was sitting for a long time, so I knew no matter what, I was going through the carburetor and everything on the bike just to make sure it was good. Everything seems to be pretty good so far. We didn't really ride it much, so I wouldn't doubt if it develops a couple leaks. I didn't replace the seals. But being as this is not a two-stroke, it really doesn't matter if the seals leak. All that does is leak oil. It doesn't allow air to get in. Because, you know, in a two-stroke, you cannot have leaking seals. Or you end up with how Jokester's running. Rup, 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 rup. Real slow to rev down and all that nonsense. Okay, we have a bunch of extra parts in here. Hm, that's weird. I wonder why. I'm going to call her and see what she says. All right, guys, let's see how it does. Let's warm it up and let's uh, give it one more start for the send off. Look at that. Easy peasy. Nice throttle response. Kill switch works perfectly fine. There you go, guys. That's how you have it. We have ourselves a perfectly running 
not necessarily functioning, but a perfectly running Mini 40 Mini Dirt Bike. So I hope you guys liked the video. I hope you maybe learned something, and I hope you are not scared to take your Mini Dirt Bike apart next. If you have any questions, hit them down in the comments. I love to hear what you guys are thinking and talking about. Also, if you get a chance, go over to Facebook and join our group or our group chat. Either one would be awesome to have you in. You could post up your pictures, your videos, promote your channel, whatever you want to do in there. It's totally free. Also, if you like this kind of content, usually it's motorized bikes, but this is pretty much a motorized bike in a way. So please hit the subscribe button. I appreciate that. It really helps out the channel and helps me make a little bit more money on the channel so I can put it back into the bikes. Because that's what I do with the money that I get from YouTube. I put it right back into all the bikes, which isn't a lot of money. Don't get me wrong. That's why you see me always working with cheap junk. So if you want it to be not as cheap a junk and maybe a little bit pricier cheap junk, then please subscribe. Because I would love to buy more expensive cheap junk. Because I do enjoy this hobby. So as always, guys, I appreciate you watching. I'll talk to you in the next one. Peace.